Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's 10.30 and welcome to JM Finn Spring Seminar. It now gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce our next speaker this morning, David Schreiber. David is Director of Communications at Ocado. Um, you will all know Ocado, whether a customer or not, um, and with grocery, the largest retail market globally and the online grocery channel, the fastest growing, Ocado are definitely at the forefront of our changing shopping habits. So, David, over to you. I will just share my screen. Oliver, thank you very much. And uh, I think as a stock, uh, there are two things about Ocado Group uh, which uh, stand out. I, I think the first is that uh, Ocado uh, is one of three that I'm aware of where a founder uh, has taken a business from a blank piece of paper to the FTSE 100. Uh, which has been you know, a remarkable journey over 20 years. The business was founded back in 2000. The second is, if, if you just look at the scope and pace of uh, uh, evolutionary growth uh, that Accardo Group has undergone in the last, let's say, five years, um, I can't think of too many companies that have uh, transitioned to the extent that uh, Accardo Group has, really from a FTSE 250 UK pure play online grocer, you know, a, a B2C business to a FTSE 100 global B2B business. And what I'd like to do today is give you a short overview of where we are now, uh, where the market's going to, and what we are doing uh, to create value uh, for uh, our, our shareholders. Now, I think the first thing to say um, uh, is that uh, what we've seen over the COVID period uh, is an acceleration of uh, pre-existing uh, trends. Uh, and uh, if you look back to uh, 2020, uh, we have seen uh, effectively 20 years of growth in the online grocery sector in really the space of 20 weeks uh, through uh, the spring and summer months of, uh, of last year. Uh, market share uh, in the UK um, has uh, uh, has uh, grown uh, from 7% uh, to uh, 13%. Um, uh, and uh, that's not been just a UK phenomenon, it's really a, a, a global uh, phenomenon. Um, so uh, we uh, now see that 30% uh, of UK customers uh, are saying that they're going to shop for more groceries online in the future. 90% uh, of US customers have said they will continue to shop for groceries online. And online penetration in China uh, is expected by one major investment bank to be 50% uh, by 2025. So these big structural changes in the uh, landscape for grocery retailing, um, it's not just a UK phenomenon, it's truly a global phenomenon. Um, so, you know, as I say, we've seen a doubling in market share in the UK. Uh, we've seen a quintupling of market share in the United States from around 2.5% pre-COVID to around 11% today. And the, there's real momentum um, uh, behind that. But of course, the dynamics of the market post-vaccine are likely uh, to uh, evolve. Um, I am trying to get to the next uh, slide, probably without a great deal of success. So, Oliver, you've been very kind and... ah. I'll Maybe take back that's... control, David. There we go. Yep, yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, so, uh, uh, as I say, you know, millions of people around the world and hundreds of thousands, if not millions in the UK, have tried online grocery for the first time. Uh, for the most part, uh, they, they like it. Um, they're not going to be going back. But it, it is likely that the winners in the market will need to offer um, uh, a, a variety of things, accuracy of delivery, breadth of mission served and, and value. Effectively, going forward, um, winners in the online space will ba basically be, be uh, asked to uh, offer it all. So um, same day uh, delivery as well as next day delivery. Uh, uh, delivery to home um, uh, and delivery uh, pick up at the store. Um, uh, the big basket, which is the center of gravity for um, the grocery industry. Uh, or um, uh, the immediacy shop, which covers a whole variety of different missions uh, from uh, the uh, top-up shop that you need to do between big baskets uh, to um, uh, the emergency shop, or indeed, you know, you're coming home in the evening from the office 
imagining a future when we're back in the office and there's nothing in the fridge and you know you don't really want to deliver something you just want to uh, order a you know tuna steak and a salad and a bottle of wine and have it delivered uh, within uh, half an hour so um, our smart platform um, which is the um, the hardware and uh, software uh, solution that we have developed on a proprietary basis in-house over the last 20 years uh, enables us uh, to to do this and uh, it, it's the the rollout um, of the uh, Accardo Smart Platform, which I'll refer to as OSP going forward, uh, which uh, is the means by which we can help shape the grocery landscape, not just through our UK business, which is uh, a joint venture with Marks and Spencer, but through um, the other eight partners that we have on a global basis uh, around uh, the world. So what, what is uh, OSP? Um, OSP is, and I'm going to use, uh, and forgive me if I'm using uh, jargon, but it's an end-to-end -end solution. It joins up the three critical things that you have to be able to do to bring an online grocery service to a customer. The first of those is the web shop. You, you have to have uh, an easy to use web shop that people can use. That's your interface with the customer. But that needs to be joined up with fulfillment, um, uh, the fulfilling of, of the order, which you know in grocery is a is very complex process because uh, if you take uh, you know Amazon, for example, in general merchandise, I'm told that the average order size for Amazon is around 1.8 items, which intuitively sounds correct. You know, usually those items are room temperature, you know, they're, they're, they're books or, or you know, uh, uh, whatever, apparel, um, but that's all room temperature. Whereas the average grocery order is around 50 items across a whole range of different temperature zones from frozen, fresh, chilled and ambient. Uh, it is incredibly complex to uh, uh, assemble an order uh, quickly um, with that degree of complexity. Um, and we do that by using uh, a high degree of automation you know, and robotics uh, to dramatically speed up uh, the uh, length of time it takes to uh, get that order uh, together. Uh, so if you um, if you don't have an idea of, of of what our model looks like, I'd invite you to go onto YouTube. Just put in Ocado and you'll see the the hive. It's a three dimensional cube, like a kind of big Rubik's cube um, with robots on the top, moving at very high speeds, around four meters per second, finding the location in the grid where the product you've ordered is stored, and then taking that to a uh, pick station on the periphery of the grid where it drops it down to a personal shopper, which right now is a human being who will put that order together. Uh, and what that means is that uh, this very complex order, uh, as I say, pre-COVID, we were talking about uh, an average order size of 50 items that can be fulfilled in between five and 10 minutes. If you were doing that in store, so if you were using a competitor who did a, a store pick model, just basically paying somebody to walk around a store on your behalf, that could take a minimum of 45 minutes. It could take an, an hour and a half. And that's why Historically, the issue for online grocery has never been about uh, demand. The demand has always been there because shopping, particularly for the big basket, is essentially a chore. Uh, it's really been about supply, being able to offer the service uh, in a way uh, that um, uh, is convenient, really, really good value, but, but also has sustainable economics. And that's what we've been able to do. The third and final bit of the, uh, the, the, the solution that you need to be able to offer is, is the last mile. So you've got the fulfilled order. Um, uh, you've got to get it to the customer's home. Um, and uh, what what we have is a last mile driven by, again, proprietary software, which transforms the economics of the delivery. Uh, so uh, there are a couple points to keep in mind here. The first uh, is that um, uh, routing software is absolutely vital. And I'll just give you just an example of kind of how and why we've invented uh, or developed the software uh, internally. Uh, when we started out, uh, we used uh, uh, Descartes, which is actually a, a very well-known off-the-shelf uh, routing uh, software package. But it didn't really work for us because it, it just didn't have enough calculations per second to uh, solve the very complex salesman's dilemma that we were uh, asking it to solve. Um, it's one thing if, you know, you have to work out the best route to take uh, an order from A to B to C to D E. Uh, the problem is that, you know, we give customers the ability to 
uh, choose uh, when they get their delivery hour slots from 5 30 in the morning to 11 30 at night uh, and uh, what that means uh, is um, uh, we, we don't have a luxury of setting uh, our own agenda you, you as a customer uh, set that agenda uh, so the proprietary software that we developed um, the first iteration of which was a, a thousand calculations per second more than what was available off the shelf the second iteration was again a thousand more calculations per second we're talking about a calculating power of a million calculations per second more than what could be bought off the shelf uh, and that's one of the reasons why if you think about the uh, very very high rates of on-time delivery uh, 97 98 percent on-time delivery despite the traffic conditions um, uh, in, uh, in in the UK for the most part uh, that is driven by uh, the software that we have developed ourselves and that software is the thread that goes right through the Accardo Smarts platform um, and Oliver if we go to the you know the, the, the next slide what, what we have done is basically license or, or, or sell that technology to some of the world's biggest and best most progressive most forward-looking grocers so uh, we work with nine today, two in the UK. One is our uh, Accardo business that uh, many of you will be familiar with as customers, um, which is the joint venture with Marks and Spencer. We also um, do Morrison's online grocery uh, in the UK. Uh, in Europe, we work with the leading Catalan retailer, Bonpreu, Group Casino, which is a global retailer in its own right, but one of the big French retailers, Eco, which is the kind of the dominant player in Scandinavia as well as uh, E.ON, which is uh, Japan's largest supermarket chain, Coles, which is uh, with Woolworths, one of the leading uh, grocers in Australia, uh, Sobeys, which occupies a similar position in Canada, and Kroger, uh, which is the largest supermarket chain in the United States. I think, you know, if you look at the FY20 results, which we published at the beginning of the year, this really shows two things. Firstly, um, what it shows is that Ocado Retail um, it is actually the most profitable business in uh, the UK grocery market, whether it's offline or online. Uh, and that's very encouraging for both our partners as well as our shareholders, because uh, effectively what Kroger is buying is what uh, uh, Cardo Retail is rolling out uh, today. It's, uh, if I could use the analogy of the, the TV chef, um, uh, you know, Kroger is, is making the dish, but, um, you know, uh, an exact replica of the dish has already been in the oven cooking for an hour or so, and it's ready to ready to uh, bring out and, and, and eat. Um, the, the, the second thing is that our partners are accelerating. Of course, I said at the beginning that we are uh, seeing these big structural changes. The tectonic plates of the grocery industry are uh, really shifting. Uh, all our partners are looking to accelerate and we are investing more to support them because that's right to create future value now. The, the more um, customer fulfillment centers we open for our partners, the more the, the greater the store of value for our shareholders in the longer term. So what does this all mean? Well, the, the total addressable market for the grocery industry, if we're just taking countries with a population of more than 5 million and more than $15,000 uh, uh, GDP per capita per year, that's 2.8 trillion pounds on its own. I mean, the, the US TAM is a trillion dollars, again, uh, just looking at the US. It's a huge opportunity. And I would say that what we're doing is not, not only uh, having a laser focus on exploiting that opportunity, but we're looking at every stage to go further in the transformation of the online grocery model. And that means investing in robotic picking, autonomous vehicles, vertical farming, where you've got additional TAMs that overlap with, but are kind of TAMs that sit adjacent to uh, the, um, the big market that I uh, referred to earlier. So just to conclude, it, it's in our DNA to solve some of the toughest technology and engineering challenges of the age. You'll see this uh, from us more and more uh, in, in the years ahead. Uh, and that's really the kind of business that Ocado Group is. It's, it's the kind of uh, stock we are. We're, we're looking to uh, do things which others can't do and create permanent and long lasting value for our shareholders as a result. David, thank you. Thank you.